This is Day 9 Daily number 470, where we learn to be a better gamer. I would like to remind everyone that this is going to be the last week of dailies for a while. Weirdly enough, weirdly enough, I decided to do this thing called a vacation. From starting on uh, June 11th, going till the start of July, I will not be working. I'm sure I'll do some stuff, but I will not be doing streams, events, any of that stuff. I'm going to withdraw back into my brain and just think non-Star Crafty things for a little while. So, of course, uh, given that my vacation is coming up uh, starting that week, um, I have to do this weird thing like planning for a vacation. I actually don't really take breaks ever. Like, let me just move my squeaky chair around and tell you about this. I don't really take breaks. Uh, pretty much since the daily started, I haven't had a day off, and actually, literally, in the last two years, I've had zero days off, including Christmas. Yeah, even did a little work on Christmas Day. And someone approached me and basically said that's really unhealthy and yelled at me. And that person is called a, a co-worker, <laughs> who was like, Sean, I don't want you to die. It's, it's bad for everyone who works with you. So, I'm going to try to avoid death by just resting. Ah. <sighs> Two important things come out of this. One, how do you take a vacation? I've never done that. I don't know how you do that. I, I, I've already decided that I'm going to finish watching Game of Thrones Season 2. I've only seen the first three episodes. I'm going to watch Legend of Korra, which I've watched none of. I'm going to read Name of the Wind. I'm going to finish Bastion. And I'm going to play Magic the Gathering with Husky, Roe, and Dex... Or, not Dexter. Dex Bonus. Uh, and Rob P. Simpson. Mm-mm-mm. It's going to be good. And anything else... That's good. You should let me know. Tweet at me things that people do on vacations because I haven't figured it out yet. So that's going to be happening. The second thing is, of course, this is the last week of dailies. Three dailies today, tomorrow, and Thursday. And that'll be that. And if any of you are down at the Ubisoft booth at E3 tomorrow, I'm going to be introing and closing their Shoot Mania finals casted by Joe Miller and Total Biscuit. That's all there is to it. Let's talk about today's daily topic. Terran versus Protoss. <gasps> the scary matchup. People have been bitching about this matchup. People are absolutely losing their shit about TVP recently because there seems to be this how do I beat the Protoss in the late game? They're too strong and all this sort of shenanigans. And this has, I would say, had some validity to it. Not that it's unfair, but certainly when a Protoss has everything that he would ever want without any interruption... It's very hard to crush a Protoss in that state. So Terrans have been trying to figure out reasonable solutions for the matchup. Uh, uh, let's see, it would be, I guess, ten days ago the Red Bull Battlegrounds tournament concluded, and Bomber just came out of the gate with, like, the sickest TVP play I have ever seen. Ever! He just made the matchup look so freaking easy, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. And the one thing that I want to say before we hop directly into gameplay is the following. Very often, everyone gets down to making about the same stuff. Terran vs. Protoss, about everyone's making Marine, Marauder, Medivac, and then eventually getting Ghosts and Vikings. And often, the entire logic process focuses on the composition. That's how people think of strategy. Well, if I'd want to do something else, I'd have to maybe get Banshees or Thors or some different mix. What we're going to see today is a build order that optimizes the basic Marine Marauder Medivac play so well that it creates an entirely new style. This is very similar to how Stefano has been playing Zerg vs. Protoss. He literally gets so many Roach Ling early on that he can bust almost any Protoss strategy, unless the Protoss has perfect defense and a lot of units. Again, nothing interesting about the composition. What's interesting is the build timings. So what I want to begin with is part one is going to be a motivation of the issues in the Terran vs. Protoss matchup. We're going to look at two games where we see around when things occur, basic looks of Terran vs. Protoss from top Terran players, and we're going to discuss where those kind of ugh, gross things come in. In part two, we're actually going to look at this amazing build that Bomber does and focus on how he is doing stuff so stupidly much faster than the games we looked at in part one. And in part three, we're going to look at some of the issues and deficiencies with um, the resulting play style and how we could possibly fix them up. 
So already I have a very nice clean daily ready for you. Chaka chaka chaka. Let's go into it. So I want to begin with this game. This is the motivation section with the sound on. <laughs> We're not going to be spending an incredibly long time on these games. But in this motivation section, I want to focus on three big things. All right, are you ready for the three big things? One, about when things happen. Like, oh, he takes a command center and expansion around 11 minutes, right? Around when things happen. The second thing is about... Uh, um, well, that's good. Why don't I just come up with a list of three and only remember the first one? That's going to make for a real educational experience. Aren't you happy I showed up today? What the hell am I talking about? Uh, oh, yeah. One is about when things are happening. The second one is what's going on with our buildings, specifically buildings, 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 in terms of those numbers. And the third thing is the Viking ghost dilemma. I don't know if he's going to be going Colossus. I want to get some Vikings if that's the case. I don't know if he's going Ghost. I mean, or I don't know if he's going Templar. I'll need Ghost in that case. We're going to be thinking a lot about that dilemma. But most importantly, the when things are happening is the number one of those three. And hence why it was the only one I remembered at attempt number one. So. Um, I do believe that there's a glitch when you load old replays. Because my volume is always at 18%. But it's always quieter on older games, so this will just be a slightly quieter game. So let's look at what we're going to see Puma do. He's going to do a standard gasless expand. Very typical gasless expand. We're going to get a command center, and then most commonly we're going to be throwing down two barracks followed immediately by two gas. And this is going to be kind of a magical thing that I want you to know, right? Okay, here's our two barracks. Coming up once we hit 150 is our two gas all happening before 27 supply. We get our barracks, we get our orbital command, and I specifically chose the, this example replay because what we're going to see Puma do is very typical of many players. Getting stim with our first set of gas. Great. Continuing to mine. Getting a factory when we can so we can follow it up with a starport. We're just making as many marines as we can. We're doing a little bit of play in the middle with these marines that's not as important. But here coming up are going to be some what's. Alright, we have our engineering bay. I'm going to get to some key moments. We haven't seen anything, so we end up throwing down a missile turret. Now, I'm going to do this moment in the gameplay in two parts. Part one is going to be look at the battle. Literally the next 30 seconds we're going to just look at twice. In terms of the battle, okay, that's what we saw. There was some battling going on at the front. I show you this to bring up this unit's lost tab and show you nothing was really lost. Basically, nothing went down. So let's go ahead and pull back to right before that battle began and start looking at some whens in this build. When stuff is happening. Okay. So... Right when the medevacs pop out, it's going to be around 9.30 or so, 9.45. Okay, I'm going to stop right when we have these two medevacs here. And what I'm going to do is come to the unit station, and I'm going to start writing some numbers in my handy-dandy notepad. All right. You know what? You know what? I'll even be amazing. I will save the notepad as DAT TVP bomber style. Mm-hmm. Excellent. DAT TVP bomber style. Okay, cool. Let's write down some numbers. At 945, what do we have? We have 40 SCV, 2 Medivacs, 27 Marine. Let me go ahead and put some, some commas in here. And this is, I think, a fairly standard look. We have the combat shield coming on up. We didn't really take a lot of damage at this thing at the front. And, right, looking around, we have one missile turret, two missile turret. I mean, there's nothing exceptionally out of the ordinary. And likewise, there's nothing exceptionally amazingly far ahead of what Puma's doing. See what I'm doing? I'm motivating the current state of TVP, where this is generally where players will get. And I record some very specific numbers 
so we can see what's up. Also, I want to write down the buildings. That's the other important thing I want to write down. Three racks. Um, star, one port, uh, one tech lab right here, and one reactor. I'm not including, like, reactor star port, just because we can easily swap this reactor around as much as we want. And about a half-done upgrade. All right, nifty. At this point in time, this 10 minutes was what I would call the convergence point of TVP up until now. It was always the convergence point. Where you'd have three barracks, starport, two bays, you would just have this. And then your next question would be, do I want to get, um, do I want to get two barracks? Do I want to get an expand? Do I want to get double upgrade started? This is where you would kind of step into something interesting in that mid game. So now I'm going to begin speeding it along. All right, cool. You know, 10 minutes is also about when we're going to be adding on the rest of our add-ons. That's somewhat variable. But look at the money. Puma's money, very low. Getting combat shield, getting these marines up. This is how TVP would generally look. You would try to do pressure at the front while doing a drop at the back. No, no particular Terran force would be very large on its own. But all right, cool. Let's write down some more timings. What I'll do is like old style game one. Okay, cool. And then at 11.30, CC starts. All right, cool. Now let me keep springing it along. We're getting more gas geysers. And as a Terran player, here is another struggle we have. What have we seen? Well, I mean, we've seen a Twilight Council here. We don't know if there's Colossi. We don't know if there's storm coming up we don't know if he's just going upgrade heavy we don't have a damn clue so we're just going to begin adding on more barracks for more generic units we're getting a ghost academy but this ghost academy is finishing up around 13. and again i want I'm, i i want to stop and just emphasize again why i'm writing these times down what we're going to see from bomber in part two is the same units done the same mixture in the same order but he's getting them so much faster he's getting them so ridiculously much faster that it opens up all these new possibilities so so just even listen in my voice how much i'm talking about oh yeah how what are the possibilities that protoss can do how does that restrict what we're doing or encourage us to play in this way or that <laughs> or another and etc we don't know this is this is like literally it's literally the shittiest feeling in the known universe when this happens, where you're like starting to do some harassment, and then you walk up, and he has like four Colossi already, and you're like, oh my god, and you have to start getting the Vikings up. And I'd like to just note how broke Puma has been this whole time. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is my favorite exercise. I'm going to go off in the corner. I'm going to come back to that convergence point, and I'm just going to max it up to eight minutes. Look at Blue's money, the Terran player Puma. Look at his money. It's staying really low. It gets a little high for a moment, but it immediately gets burned on that expansion again. Staying really low. Look, we have some more upgrades coming. Staying low. Staying low. I mean, there's no skyrocket. There's nothing crazy like this going on. My God, is he being good. And this is what can happen very often, is you're playing in a style as Puma, and you're just looking at your base, and you're just like, yeah, I mean, there's literally no way I could have done anything any faster or any better. And you end up with these sorts of awkward, oh, oh no! Ah! Oh, StarCraft froze on me. Oh my god, that was so scary. Oh my god, that was so scary. Okay, cool. So this is the tenuous spot you end in as, as a Terran player. You can do these sort of cutesy counter attacky drops and you run the risk of losing everything. Fortunately, Puma defends, but he defends by the skin of his teeth. He loses a lot of stuff. It's this little counterattack in the main. And we, we got the chance to see a pretty good, clean TVP game. But did you see where there was that problem that Puma encountered where he just didn't know? if it was going to be Templar. He didn't know if it was going to be Colossi. Should I make Vikings? Should I make Ghosts? Maybe I can kind of get both, but I don't have any barracks. We already see kind of a big struggle happening. There was one more game that I wanted to show. Oh, God, which one was it? Um, ah, that's right. It's another um, state 
or it, it's a game that we saw earlier in the day nine daily. It's select versus state. And I want you to note about all these timings end up being the same. Let me hop back into this game. There we go. So I have another really good player, select, very good, such as Puma, who is very, very good. We see a conversation between select and state about something, as of course they began all their conversations about popping like a G6. Excellent. <laughs> but yeah, we go double barracks, double refinery. All right, when do some basic timings begin to happen? Well, we get stim first, then we get our factory. Ooh, select getting a little bit earlier of an engineering bay. We're getting our star port up. It's a little earlier than Puma's was, but Puma did um, some rearrangements by, you know, like lifting this orbital command and all that jazz. And I'm stopping at around 9.30 again, and I'm coming to the unit counting station, and I want to note how similar everything is. At 9.30, uh, well, it looks like Select has a few more SCVs. This is expected, because in the last game we lost a couple SCVs in an attack. We have two medevacs, 27 marines, well, it looks like we swapped it out for some marauders. Three racks, one port, one tech lab, one reactor. And he added the add-ons shortly thereafter. Okay, cool. Yeah, look. Three barracks, one starport with reactor. Looks like Select built his add-ons 30 seconds earlier. We have a plus one coming up. We have combat shield coming up. And again, notice 10 minutes is where we have all these things. And this is around when we get ready to take an expansion. Or do something else. Select tries to do some pushing stuff at the front. Come on, select. Come on, take it. Yeah, look at this. Around 11 minutes is when some third command centers start. We still have three barracks. Select going for a little bit earlier two barracks play. Or excuse me, two engineering bay play. And what we're seeing is again and again and again, Terran players try to do this harassy, cutesy kind of pressure. But suddenly, Select gets himself in a bit of an awkward situation in doing all this harassment. He's unable to bust the front door down. And now he's got to start getting a bunch of barracks, right? These two barracks, I will note in terms of timing. I want to note specifically that these barracks pop down also around 11.30. So I'll do this. Old style game 2. At 9.30, we saw that Select had 45 SCVs. He had two medevacs. He had uh, 24 marines to... Marines to Marauders. What did he have at 11.30? He had 3rd CC starting, and he had 2 extra racks building. I actually will spread it out because it's a little bit easier to read. Okay. Right now, I'm, again, I'm taking notes. I'm doing a motivation for this TVP style. When we see Select, he's going to be adding on some more barracks in a moment. He's trying to do this little micro-control harassy thing. And I think most Terran players are aware that in the matchup they need to do some funny business in the mid-game just to keep Protoss on their toes. But now we're adding in these other barracks. At 13 minutes, we have a done Ghost Academy. Um, so I'll just go ahead and say that around uh, 12.30... Ghost Academy going down, uh, and two extra racks. I want to just pause uh, in a moment here, right when, there we go. This is when Protoss starts to move out. Here's the feel that I would describe about TVP in the, in, in the last two games. The feel is... I am going to defend until I get my medevacs out, and then I'm going to be putting some pressure on you. It's not really an attack. It's just like throwing ninja stars or darts from a distance, you know? It's like trying to poke here and pick off there and do little stuff there. It's nothing big and dramatic from Terran. But it's distracting enough that Terran can do things like get this up. All that we've seen for the last three minutes is distraction to get the orbital up, distraction to get my two eBays up, distraction to get a fourth command center started. And always, 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 always around 14 minutes, we've been seeing things peter out for Terran. We've been seeing Terrans just kind of go, oh crap, I'm kind of on the run, and we see shit like this happen, where Terran's like, ah, 
now like desperately trying to do some counterattack to hopefully pull this Protoss Force back. Like doing all these little counterattacky goofinesses. And we also have the yuckiness of, you know, I'm getting the ghosts out, but have you started Colossus production yet? Because if you've started Colossus production, I just don't, I won't know. I don't know. Remember how I said that that was a third big issue that Terrans have? Like, cool, great, this is distracting him, but as a, as a Terran player, I just don't know if you're going Colossus now. I can't possibly know. So at this point in time, I'm going to give the motivation for Bomber's build and even restate it at the start of part two. Here is the cool idea. With Bomber's play, we're going to get so many units so fast that we can make early decisions about let me try this again. We get so many units so incredibly fast that we kill off most openings. Just right off the bat, kill them. The only way that he can successfully defend is if he brings his whole army to the front of his base. Consequently, we can decide by 11 minutes if we need to go Ghost or if we need to go Viking. And upon making that decision, we can just keep attacking. It's a great, great build order style, and we'll even see lots of stuff happening a lot faster than everyone else by his awesomeness. So let's go ahead and hop into that in part.